Welcome to dealing with materials data, we are looking at the collection analysis and interpretation of data from material science and engineering. Uh, we are in the module on probability distributions and specifically we are looking at uh, normal probability distribution and uh, in this session we are going to talk about probability scale and uh, other related uh, things to check whether a given data follows a given uh, probability distribution. It starts with normal, so we will discuss uh, normal first which is very very common and I will also show you how to use R to do uh, similar analysis for other distributions. Okay. So, the probability scale is a scale in which uh, y axis of the cumulative distribution function is scaled such that for if the data actually follows normal distribution, the plot will be a straight line. We can use ggplot2 and uh, scales to do this uh, uh, transformation of the scale to probability scale. We have done it once in the past, but uh, just for completion sake I am going to repeat uh, that part of the exercise. And uh, most important point to note at that point we actually did not do this exercise, but uh, scales actually allows for probability scales other than normal. Uh, so I will show you an example. And there are also plots which are known as QQ plots, quantile quantile plots uh, from two data sets. This is also something that we have seen when we were using uh, the um, library fit DISTR plus to fit the given data to known distributions, uh, we did plot this uh, QQ plots. And in that case there were two data sets. One was from the fitting, the other one was from the data itself, empirical data. And uh, so the QQ plots uh, basically um, you, you put them together, uh, the two data sets uh, with the same parameters, uh, if they are same then uh, you will again get a, a straight line and uh, if they are different then you will see that they do not follow the straight line uh, relationship. So that is what we are going to look at uh, in this session. And uh, before we proceed to use R to look at these numbers, there is one more important thing uh, which is known as significant deviation that we should know. If you are following normal distribution, if your data follows normal distribution. So remember we said that uh, if there are random noise uh, in an experiment, the data will follow normal distribution. If so, you can calculate what is the probability that uh, um, a data point will lie about the mean uh, within let us say 0 0.6745 sigma. So 50 percent of the data points then you expect to fall within this distance. And if you go for 1 sigma about 68 percent of the data will fall or any data point has 68.3 percent probability to fall between plus or minus sigma about the mean. And if you keep going 1.5 sigma is 86.6 and 2 sigma is 95.45, 2.5 sigma is 98.76, 3 sigma is 99.73. In other words, there is less than 1 percent chance for any data to fall outside of 3 sigma if you do an experiment. Remember, if you do an experiment, I mean if one data falls outside of 2.5 sigma, that is understandable because if you have 100 data points for example, uh, then it is about 99 percent of the times it should fall. So there is 1 percent probability that some data will fall outside this. So that is expected, so that is not uh, uncommon. But if anything goes beyond 3 sigma, in all probability that uh, it is a significant deviation. And uh, while reporting data, if you find data with very significant deviations, you should still report the data. You might discard the data for some of the analysis uh, that you will do, uh, but uh, it is still important to report and indicate that you are discarding and the reason for uh, discarding, namely that it is a significant deviation. And in most of the cases uh, like we discussed in the past ones. Uh, significant deviations might also indicate something about the experiment or about the assumptions that you are making that might not be true or valid for that uh, particular case or there might be other uh, issues or uh, phenomena that is happening. So it is important to pay attention to such data which has significant deviation of course, uh, but it is also very important to uh, report them. It is wrong to consider data 
which have uh, or, or data which is significantly deviating uh, or to discard them without informing, both are wrong. You cannot uh, emphasize only on data which has significant deviation, you can also not just leave out data which has significant uh, deviation. So, it is important that you report and uh, then um, indicate that you are discarding if at all you are discarding. So, let us now go back and uh, use R to look at these. So, let us first start with the probability scale problem. Um, this is something that uh, like I said I am just uh, repeating. So, this we have done in the past. Uh, so, we read uh, the ETP copper conductivity data, uh, we invoke the library ggplot and scales and uh, we first uh, say that okay, conductivity data has to be plotted and it is the uh, empirical cumulative distribution function that we plot. Uh, remember the probability scale is uh, scaling the y axis uh, in such a way that uh, this uh, ECDF plot will be a straight line. And uh, so, scales actually allows for this uh, y axis scaling and the probability transformation is for normal distribution. So, this is what allows us to put other probability transformations as we will see shortly uh, you can do other transformations and, and look at data. Okay, so, this we have done. So, you can see that this is sort of uh, a straight line um, and you can also find out where the mean is and uh, uh, what is the, um, the value of uh, um, the standard deviation etcetera from such a plot, you will be able to directly uh, read it out. Uh, but this is very small number of data points and the straight line also is not looking quite like a straight line. Uh, here it is uh, better and uh, so, so you can see that uh, um, if you go this way, um, so you will, you will find the, um, the, 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 the data does follow a more uh, straight line. So, let us try to do a uh, similar exercise, uh, but now from the data that we have generated uh, uh, from R itself. So, I want to generate uh, some 10,000 uh, random uh, normal deviates uh, and uh, the mean is 5 and standard deviation is 3. And I am going to do the same exercise, plot the data and uh, the cumulative distribution function of this uh, data, uh, but I am going to change the probability scale to normal. So, when we do that, so you can see that uh, this follows a straight line and you can see where the mean is. So, that is at 5 and you can also see where the uh, standard deviation is. So, that is uh, 3 right 5 plus or minus 3. So, you can see that it is uh, here uh, 5 minus 3 which is uh, like 2 because it is 0 2.55. So, so 2 is somewhere here and similarly 8 is somewhere here it is 7.58. So, from the um, plot uh, where the y axis is the probability scale from the straight line, you can also read off the mean and standard deviation fairly easily. So, that is one of the advantages of using these uh, plots. Okay. Uh, it was difficult for us to do in the case of conductivity because the number of data points was very less. So, it was overall uh, straight line behavior, but you know the data was having lots of steps. So, we could not clearly see, but it is possible to do it. So, here it is very clear uh, that this is at 5 and this is at uh, 2 and uh, slightly here uh, which is at 8. So, you can find out uh, the um, mean and the standard deviation by looking at these plots. Right. So, now let us do the next exercise. So, I want to show you that uh, it is possible to use uh, uh, scales other than normal and get similar plots. Okay. So, in this case for example, I am using the uh, uniform distribution and I am generating some 10,000 uh, random deviates uh, from the uniform distribution and I am going to do the same exercise. So, plot uh, the cumulative distribution function, scale the y axis, but I am going to scale it to be uniform. See, if I suppose scale it to be norm, <coughs> I will find data like this. 
So obviously it is not a straight line which is understandable because it is a normal uh, scale that we have used here whereas the data is actually generated from the uniform distribution. But if I make it uniform you will see that the data follows a straight line right. So it is very clear that uh, we can get information uh, about other types of distribution. So you can look at the data and you can uh, prepare such plots and see what happens. So, so it was between 0 and 1 uh, it is um, uniform uh, distribution and uh, so you can see uh, that, uh, that the data follows a straight line uh, when plotted uh, by changing the y axis of the cumulative distribution function to follow the uh, scale of uniform probability distribution. Okay. So, we can do uh, a similar thing. So, I am going to show you a slightly more complicated one which is for what is known as the Weibull um, distribution. We will look at Weibull distribution shortly. Um, so, okay. Okay. so I am going to generate random deviates from the variable distribution 10,000 of them and again I am going to plot the cumulative distribution function and the transformation scale I am going to make it as variable okay. and you will see that again it follows a straight line. Of course, we can do the other exercise instead of um, so remember in the case of uh, uh, transformation probability transformation uh, for Weibull the shape uh, of uh, the shape parameter of the Weibull uh, distribution is also important which we have used here and the same parameter should be used to, to get the proper probability uh, scale. Uh, so that is why this extra parameter is needed to be given. Uh, let us say that if I try to do this also as norm so what happens? right so so again you see that there is a deviation from the straight line behavior so any deviation that you see from the straight line behavior basically indicates that it is not following so if you had this data and if you tried to fit it for a normal distribution if you made this uh, cumulative distribution function plot and made the y axis to be uh, a probability scale for the normal distribution function you will immediately see that the data is not following the um, normal distribution. So, on the other hand if you make it uh, for Weibull you will find that it is becoming a straight line. So, basically uh, cumulative distribution plots with the appropriate uh, scaling of the y axis should give you straight line or wherever it gives you a straight line that scale basically tells you what is the distribution from which your data is derived. So, it is a very nice way and very useful way because many a times we have lots of data and we want to know what is the distribution that the data follows specifically most of the times we are interested in knowing whether the data follows normal distribution. So, that is why generally probability scale commonly is the normal distribution but of course with R now there is no such uh, constraint. Uh, previously there used to be um, graph sheets or uh, sheets with uh, such uh, scaled uh, variables uh, for y axis uh, on which you can plot but with the computers now you can change the scale to anything you want and work with them. So, that is the advantage. Okay. So, we will also look at an example of the QQ plot which is a quantile quantile plot and for doing that again I am going to go back to the uh, electrical conductivity copper electrical conductivity example which we have seen um, Okay, so, we are going to read the ETP conductivity data and I am also going to generate uh, 20 random uh, normal deviates with the same mean and the standard deviation as my data and then I am going to make a QQ plot of uh, the data and the random normal deviates that I have made and you can see that they sort of follow this uh, line. Okay. So, that basically tells you the, from this QQ plot that this is the, the data probably follows a um, normal distribution. Of course, it does not have to be just normal you can also make QQ plots for other ones. Let us do for variable distribution 
And because we do not have data at the moment, uh, let us do the variable distribution, uh, let us generate 1000 and 2000 random deviates uh, from the variable distribution and uh, let us generate a QQ plot. Okay. So, you can see that uh, the data actually follows um, uh, QQ plot also follows this uh, kind of uh, behavior which tells you that uh, the data. So, if one of them was an empirical data, the other one was uh, a random deviate that you got uh, from R. Uh, if they followed uh, such a straight line behavior, then you know that this data is pro probably following variable distribution for example. So, it is very useful uh, to have these uh, probability scale transformation and QQ plots and typically they were uh, uh, for normal distributions because normal was considered as the most ubiquitous uh, uh, distribution. So, everything else was uh, uh, sort of benchmarked against normal, uh, but with R we have more freedom and we can use uh, any distribution that we want and we can generate these plots uh, which will give us better idea about uh, the data and uh, what kind of distribution probably our empirical data follows. So, we will stop uh, here for uh, normal and uh, we will try to look at uh, some more distributions and uh, how to use R to uh, deal with those distributions and uh, what is their relevance for material science and engineering. Thank you.